Number 48. A very strong but inept shot putter puts the shot straight up vertically with an initial velocity of 11 meters per second. How long does he have to get out of the way if the shot was released at a height of 2.2 meters and he is 1.8 meters tall? All right. So let's just draw a little picture. Picture. I said picture, I think. Whatever. Um, so here, here's the shot. Okay, he's going to throw it up. Okay, so he is releasing it. Well, his arm should be a little more extended, right? So he, <laughs> just bear with me on this one. So here's his arm. Right. Let's angle that a little better. Okay. <laughs> kind of looks like a dance move, right? It looks like he's dancing. Or she's dancing, right? And um, anyway, so this ball, shot, whatever it is, it's going to be released uh, with an initial velocity, it tells us, of uh, 11.0 meters per second. All right, and it tells us also the height at which it's released. The height, you know, relative to the ground, they're telling us, basically. So this particular height here is going to be 2.20 meters per second. What? Meters, not meters per second. That would be a very uh, interesting unit for height. So 2.20 meters. All right. And what's basically going to happen is that this shot is going to go up and he's going to have to try to get out of the way because it's going to come back down on his head. And it's not going to curve like this, but just pretend it goes straight up and straight down. But I got to give us some perspective. So I can't really draw the dots, you know, right behind it because um, it would look kind of bad. Not that it looks good now, but you know what I mean. And um, it tells us that the height now of the shot putter is you know, 1.80 meters, okay? And it wants us to calculate now the time. So time is equal to question mark, okay? Told us the initial velocity, so let's just write this down, right? I mean, we already have it written down when I'm listing out my variables now that I know, meters per second. Now, arguably, we also know the displacement. Now, by the way, this video I'm doing, this is one way that we can look at this problem that's kind of like, I'll say, a shortcut, but... We have to go through the quadratic equation through this one. I have another video out there about the same problem, okay, that avoids the quadratic equation, but it's much longer in terms of the calculation. Uh, and uh, in that video, just so you know, I round, you know, heavily. Um, the answer is still pretty much there, but you should really round at the end of your calculations. Anyway, um, what I can now do is I can actually calculate the displacement of this ball, of this shot, okay? If I know that it's starting at a height of 2.20 meters and it's going to end at a height of 1.8 meters, what is this shot's then displacement? Displacement is simply the difference in length between the start point or the starting height here and the ending height. So what would this height in here be? You'd say, oh, just subtract the two. And yes, I would agree with you. Okay. So the the displacement here is simply going to be, now it's going to be negative because it's always the final height, right? It's always final minus initial. So the final here in the terms of the problem, it's going to be the 1.80 minus then the 2.20, okay? And when you now do the math, right, this should come out to be negative 0 0.4, okay? Meters. Okay. Um, so... We know, we know the initial velocity, we know the displacement, we don't know the time. It turns out that at the moment we cannot use any formula to calculate, okay? There is something though that you have to memorize whenever an object is in the air, okay? Whenever it's just floating, so to speak. It's not even really floating, but it's in the air. Gravity is always acting on it. The force of gravity is always pulling this ball down. Therefore, the acceleration of this ball we know this is memorized. It's going to be negative 9.80 meters per second. Anytime an object is in free fall, in other words, it's just experiencing the force of gravity and nothing else. There is no normal force pushing up. I know you're like, what the heck are you talking about? You'll understand when you get to chapter four. Um, but you have to know that that's the acceleration. Now we can solve. Now I can use equation number two because I know everything except one variable. Right, so the displacement here is going to be equal to the initial velocity times time plus one half times the acceleration times time squared. So the, the displacement is going to be negative 0.4. The initial velocity was 11 meters per second. 
The time is unknown, so leave that blank. The acceleration here is negative 9.80, and again, the time squared. Now this turns out, as I mentioned, to be a quadratic, but don't be afraid, just simplify it first. So this is going to be, instead of a plus, now it's a negative, right, a minus, 4.9 t squared. I'm not worried about sig figs at the moment, I'm gonna be worried about sig figs at the end of my calculation. Now what I need to do is I need to now set this up and I realize it's a quadratic, why? Because I have a term with a variable squared, then I have another term with just that variable not squared but to the first power, and then I have another term with no variable attached. Right, that looks exactly like this form, ax squared plus bx plus c. Right, here's your variable, the x squared, the x, and then there's no x there. Okay, so what I need to do is try to get it into this form where it equals zero. In other words, I wanna take these values here and bring them on over to the left-hand side. So I'm gonna subtract my 11.0t from both sides. And then I'm going to add my 4.9t squared to both sides. Okay, cancels, cancels, bada bing, bada boom. So now we're gonna have 4.9t squared minus 11.0t minus 0 0.4 is equal to zero. Now you can do your quadratic equation. Remember the quadratic equation is equal to its negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So you can do this long, right? You can do this uh, the long way. This value right here, including the negative sign is your b. This value, including the negative sign is your c. All right, and this value over here, it's positive but you can just leave the sign out is your A. Take, you can take those numbers then and just throw them in and calculate, all right? Um, but you should actually program the quadratic equation into your calculator. You can look it up on YouTube how to program it in if you've got like a TI something or other. Um, and that's just what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna open up the program. I'm going to put in, type in 4.9 for my A, type in negative 11 for my B, and then type in negative 0.4 for my C. And I get two answers. Okay, the two answers will be negative 0 0.035, you know, nine or so, or excuse me, eight, I guess, if you round. And then the other answer is going to be positive 2.28, right? 2.28, okay? Uh, 2.28, all right. Um, you're always gonna get two answers, basically, when you when you solve a quadratic, okay? Just get rid of, I mean, for the most part, doesn't, you're not guaranteed, but almost always you'll be getting two answers. Disregard the negative value, please. Just focus on the positive. And that's actually now the answer. So this calculate, right, this T, oops, the T in here, if you were to plug in now 2.28, you know, not the rounded value, but the 2.28 exact value you got, and you plugged it in for your T's here, and you squared it here, multiplied by 4.9, you plugged it in here, multiplied by negative 11, right? You added those two and then subtracted this on out, blah, 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 blah. It's gonna equal zero, okay? So the time here is going to be 2.28 seconds. Now, the only thing to consider here at the end is gonna be sig figs. I'm gonna leave it as three. Uh, reason being is because basically three, you know, represented the values that were given. So that would be the, that would be the time, okay? Like I said, if you wanted another way to do it, I got another video out there for you to check out. It's a much longer way to do it, but you avoid the quadratic. Some people like that, but I get comments saying like, why'd you, you know, why'd you go, Why'd you do all this and do all that and do all this? Couldn't you use the equation? I'm like, yeah, you could. And, you know, yeah, there's many ways to do it. So, you know, depending upon what you like or whatever, some people hate the quadratic equation, people who hate math, right? Some people don't mind it, so they want it done faster. But, you know, it's what it is. It's what it'll be. It's what it is. Guys, thanks for tuning in. I really do hope this helped, and if it did, help us out by subscribing, liking, and even telling your friends. All right? We appreciate it very, very much, and I'll see you soon. Take care.